Hello everyone, my name is Albert Hoiting and I'm coming, from you, uh, coming to you from The Hague here in the Netherlands. Um, I'm a Microsoft MVP for security and for Microsoft 365 and today I'll be giving you a short overview of sensitivity labels within Microsoft 365. So first off, how do they look like from a user's perspective and then in a very high level overview um, how an admin can configure those labels. So first off, um, let, let's just uh, look at how this works from a user's perspective. So uh, this is not the, uh, where we need to be. We need to be in, for example, Word to see this. So over here, I've got a document. Um, it's newly created. And what you will probably notice at first is the yellow bar at the top. And that's one of the components within Microsoft Purview Information Protection. And that is the ability to de basically demand the user to set a specific label. Um, when I'm going to configure the labels, you'll see that we have other options as well. But for now, as this is a new document, I need to select a label. So um, I'm going over here, selecting a label, and over here are my labels I can choose from. Um, as you can see, th this is a uh, label hierarchy, as it's known, and it goes from less sensitive to highly sensitive. And in my case, I'll just go for uh, anyone unrestricted and I'll say OK. Right now, the document is labeled and that label will show up uh, in, um, in SharePoint Online, for example, as a metadata field. And as you probably have noticed already, I also have a footer added to the document because the document has been classified as confidential. Um, if I go over here, um, I'll see the same labels. So I can, uh, for example, choose to go to a higher level of confidence in this case, uh, highly confidential. And as you can see, the, uh, the, the footer will be replaced as well. Um, but please note uh, what happens if I go to a lower classification level, for example, general. Then I will need to explain this to my compliance officers, for example. So I'll just say, it no longer applies, for example. Anything I'm noticing here or anything I'm doing here will be logged, by the way, so that it can be retrieved later. So these are, in a very, very uh, small nutshell, the ways those labels work. Uh, we can also use auto-classification, uh, in which case the, the, the platform will detect if there's confidential information and then apply the label or do a recommendation for a label. And we can also use the labels in Outlook, for example. A third option is to apply these kinds of labels to sites and groups and teams environments. But that's not a thing I'm going to discuss in these couple of minutes. So let's go to the IT uh, side of things, configuring the labels. And for this, I'm going to the new, it's, it's still in preview, but the new purview portal. Um, the, the current one, the compliance.microsoft.com, uh, looks somewhat different, uh, different uh, as compared to this one. The functionality is roughly the same. So for this, I need to go to information protection. And over here, I have my overview of my, uh, my information protection components um, and uh, what we need to do to create labels is to basically go to my sensitivity labels. Um, that's what I'm going to do next but I first off I want to show you that if I go to policies I'm uh, um, able to see the publishing policies and the, uh, those are the policies which basically are well demanded uh, of my user to apply a label for example. So. I'll, uh, I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. First off, the sensitivity label. So if I go there, um, I see my uh, my sensitivity uh, labels uh, at the moment. Uh, the the one at the, um, uh, the this one over here, email only. You probably noticed that didn't show up in Word. Well, and that's correct because that is known as an email label, and that only shows up in Outlook, for example. So over here I've got my hierarchy and, and one first best practice of today is use a hierarchy uh, because um, you have a lot more scalability with a lot more labeling uh, options uh, in there um, and the hierarchy also um, is, is relevant because 
as you saw already, if I choose a lower uh, class label, then I need to uh, uh, well basically say why I chose that label. Um, if I have a label hierarchy with top level labels and sub level lab labels, I've got more flexibility uh, in that uh, in that sense. So please start using a layered and a uh, well sub and top level hierarchy for your labels. So over here I have all my labels and let's just create one uh, from the level of highly confidential. Um, as you can see here, um, because this is a top level uh, label, I also have the option to create a sub label. But please note, I'm now in the confidential level, so I want to create a sub label over here. So let me create a sub label. And now I, we get to see the, the, the components of those labels. So first off, um, um, a label name, um, as you can see the parent label I can't uh, well, modify of course, but let's call this just a demo ESPC for example. The display name, aren't these the same? Well they can be, but please be aware that the name cannot be modified after you create the label. So please be aware of this. So in my demo I'll just create the same name. Um, I've got a description, this is a demo label. And I can also, uh, th this description is visible to the users. So that's, that is important. And I've got a description for admins. Um, I won't be able to choose the label color because that's based on the top level. If I create a new top level label, then I will be able to choose the color, for example. So let's uh, go back. Um, then I got the scope uh, for the label. And in, in my case, I'm working for uh, items and for emails. <coughs> But as you can see, I can also choose meetings, which basically is Teams premium functionality uh, for, for the most part. And I can choose to either do the files or the emails. Another best practice, if you can, and you want to have specific permissions for emails, just have two different labels for meals and for files. If the permissions are the same, uh, you might just want to combine them. Um, I just wrote a blog about this, so please, uh, if you want more information, go uh, to alberthoiting.com for this. Um, for now, I'll just say, okay, I'll just want to protect my files, so I go next, and then I've got a couple of settings. First off, uh, the, the access control, which basically is your, your encryption settings if you want to encrypt your data when it is being labeled. I can also apply content marking, and these settings over here, again, those are Teams Premium. So I go next and now I'm, I'm into the access control and, and now it kind of becomes a, a bit more difficult because this is going to set the permissions for the file when it's opened. So um, I can assign specific permissions and for, for, in, for, for this demo, I'll just say I want to have everyone within my tenant at least to have co-author permissions on this document. So in this case, I'll just add anyone in my organization and the co-author permission is already there. Um, if I want to, I can change this, for example. Uh, let's say if I want to go to fewer, for example, then I can change it and I can save it. So um, in this case, um, the, the permissions will be set for uh, everyone within my tenant. Um, and let's say I just want to assign more permissions. For example, I want to add a specific, let's say a specific domain. So let's, I'm working right now for inspark.nl. So let's add that permission level. And these people are going to be able to review documents when they are labeled. So, and now I save it again. And as you can see over here, I now have different permission levels based on that same label. So there's a, a, a couple of other settings here as well. Um, content never, a user access to content expires. If you have very highly sensitive information, you probably want to set this to a number of days, for example, which, pro which means that when that date is expired, the system will ask or will look if the permissions are still relevant. If it's, set, uh, if it's basically uh, to uh, set to never, then uh, the, that check is never, well, at, at least not regularly uh, regularly done. So if you have highly sensitive information, another best practice, look at that user access, com uh, the content expiration. Another one, allowing offline access. Uh, if you really have really highly sensitive information, um, just say never. 
which basically uh, uh, means that if someone downloads a document, for example, and opens the document, if it's set to never, then information protection, for, for example, in Word, is going to check again if the permissions are still valid. If you set this to um, always, then that check basically isn't done regularly. So some of those settings you can play with. Other important settings are over here. Uh, double key encryption, really complicated, only needed if you really, really have regulatory compliance issues uh, for, uh, for your encryption keys. Dynamic watermarking is relatively new uh, and allows you to um, basically watermark your documents when they're opened using the UPN of the people, uh, of the person who opened it. So if you have a data leak because someone took a picture of a document, it's always posted with that email address of that person. So um, that's basically it from, a, uh, for, for, from this perspective. I can set specific content marking, um, like a watermark or a footer text. I've so I have some options uh, there. Oh, yep, uh, I'll, just, uh, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Auto labeling, like I said, I can set specific sensitive information types or other criteria for the system to look for specific sensitive information and then the, the, the label will be applied or recommended based on those settings. Um, groups and sites, well, we didn't choose those, so I can't uh, select those as well. Schematic data assets, that's basically the other side of purview, looking at structured data. We didn't select that either, so just go next, next, finish. And then I'm, if, I'm, if I'm happy with that, I'm going to create the label. Um, when I create the label, it doesn't appear suddenly, uh, well, uh, um, well uh, for, to my users, I have to publish it first. And that's the last part of this short video, publishing a label. So basically you've got label policies to do that. And again, this is just publishing the label. This ha has nothing to do with auto classification, for example. So over here, I have my label policy and I'll just edit it. So you can see uh, what this looks like. Um, first off, what kind of labels do you want to publish to your users? So let's say I've got some labels over here, which well, um, I won't be using anymore. So I'll just remove these, for example, I'm just updating my policy right now. And now these are going to be published to my users. Um, admin units would have, would take would, would take too long to, to explain right now, but basically allows you to uh, um, well have more control, uh, delegated control over who can manage the, uh, the, the labels for different uh, organizational units within your organization, for example. So for now, I'll just skip this. Uh, and now I can choose who to uh, apply the label to. So by default, you can have all users in groups, but I can uh, exclude people. I can include specific groups, for example, which makes sense because you can create different policies. So if you have people with uh, additional labels, you can add those to a different policy. So, and now I've, in the end, the, here are the policy settings. So this was uh, one of them uh, you saw earlier providing a justification for, uh, well, basically downgrading a classification. This one you also saw, that was the yellow marking at the beginning. So I uh, need to apply specific uh, emails uh, or sp specific labels to a, a document when it's created, for example. And the other one, this one goes, uh, well, that's Fabric and Power BI, so that's not relevant right now. And this one, also a very best practice. If you have like a internet page on your SharePoint environment, uh, somewhere within your SharePoint environment, linking to your data classification policy, just include it over here and it will show up, uh, uh, well, in the information protection environment in Word, for example. So um, those are the settings from the policy. If I want to, I can set a, a specific default po uh, label based on this policy, um, choose wisely, because one of the benefits of a default label is that it really helps your users. Another disadvantage or a disadvantage to a de default label is that people might start to become less aware of the sensitivity of data because it's always provided, uh, always uh, a default label is provided anyway. So please take, uh, well, take that into account. Um, now this goes for emails. Uh, well, in my case, we were working on documents, so I'll just skip this one. 
this one is for the the teams premium again this is for so you, you see a lot of settings in one policy um, my best practice would be to create different policies for different types of labels and to have different sets of settings within those labels um, so I'll just cancel this one. Uh, in the end, you might end up with a specific uh, uh, type of, uh, of policies. And I, I want to end this uh, video by saying, please be aware. As with the sensitivity labels having a hierarchy, those policies have a hierarchy as well. As you can see over here, they have a priority hierarchy, which basically means that uh, the system will first look in the highest priority policy, uh, then it's going to go to the next one, the next one, the next one that really will impact things like a default label or any other settings. So if you uh, are experiencing something strange where some people don't see the default label or, uh, or other settings are replaced by, by different uh, settings, most of the time that's the, because of those policies. So that's it in a couple of minutes, labels from the user and, and from the uh, admin side. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this short video and uh, hope to uh, see you uh, well, hopefully soon in, uh, in person. Thank you.